Hi, welcome to Watch It Play Table Talk. My name is Rodney Smith. In this episode, I wanted to ask you a light and kind of lighthearted question. Do you buy toys for your toys? So by this I mean you've picked up a game, maybe it's one that you really enjoy, and all of the components in the box are very functional, you have no trouble playing the game, but still, you just feel like there's something missing. Maybe in the game there's a currency, some kind of money, maybe it's paper money, maybe it's a cardboard token, and it's constantly changing hands, and you just want to enhance the feeling of that trading and bartering. So instead, you go out and you buy some little plastic or metal coins and replace them so that when you're playing around the table, you hear the coins clinking together, there's a little bit of weight to them as you amass more and more of them. Maybe the game comes with a starting token that's just a plain wooden piece, and so you go out and buy something to replace it that's more significant and just makes it more interesting and fulfilling to be that first player. I personally haven't done this a lot, but I think it's great, and I've seen lots and lots of examples of it on Board Game Geek. And that's actually where I think I did it the first time. I was on there, I picked up the game Lords of Waterdeep. And in that game, uh, there's several different wooden cubes, differently painted to represent different adventurers. Fighters, clerics, mages, and so on. But again, they're just little cubes. Someone, Danny Perello, had the great idea of, instead of using those cubes, he laser cut these tiny little wooden figures, called them D&D bulls, which was brilliant in and of itself, and then he sold them online. People could pick them up, and so they could replace those cubes with the little figures. I have a few of them here. Let me just uh, put them out for you to see. Not only were the pieces cut to bring to life the characters that they represented, but they were also basically the same size as the original cubes. So they remained very functional. They took up the same amount of space on the game board, and when you went to put them away, they fit perfectly into the game box. So these were very popular, and it just brought to mind to me how much people enjoy this kind of thing and are willing to pay money for it, especially if it's a game they really enjoy. Now, you don't always have to go out and buy somebody else's thing. You can sometimes do your own thing. And I did that uh, with this. This is a, a dice box that we use here on the series. You might have seen it if you've watched some of our previous playthroughs. I find when I'm rolling dice on the table, they often go all over the place. Off the table, they knock pieces over, they <laughs> interrupt gameplay. And especially for the series, I didn't want that happening. So I needed a solution, and I do get asked uh, from time to time, you know, where can I buy a dice box like that? So it's actually not a dice box. I was going through a discount store and found uh, it. It was a picture frame. So there was glass actually right here. And it just, I don't know, it just kind of struck me this would work as a dice box. And the thing I really like about it uh, is that it has this kind of thicker frame edge here. So when you're rolling dice, if you need to store some of the dice while you roll others, I just kind of put them up on the edge, and then I can roll my other dice and compare the results and, and so on. I then put little uh, felt feet on the bottom so I could put it on my table and not worry about it scraping things up. And then the bottom put a little bit of cloth. So. If you're looking for a dice box, keep an eye out for some uh, interesting and clever dice frames. You might be able to find something that's, that's unique to you. And also, here's a gift I was really, really pleased to receive from the folks at Geek Chic. They make really, really, really nice gaming tables. You should check out their website just to gawk at them, if nothing else. And it turns out they were um, viewers of the show, and, and they, they gave me this really nice dice tower. And you've probably seen these before, but basically you dump the dice into the top here. There's a few little paddles along the way, so they bounce off of those, randomize them before they spit out the bottom. Of course, they're contained within this tray, so you don't have to worry about the dice going anywhere. And it can be nicely packed up later. So sometimes you might do your own thing, sometimes you might buy something. But I'm curious, have you done this for any of your games? I would love to see video responses of this, just to see some of the examples of things that you've done to upgrade your games or, or just put a little extra shine and polish on them. And be sure to leave a comment below and, and describe some of the different things that you've done for games that you enjoy. In the next episode, I'll come back and I'll handpick some of these and talk about them a little further. You may have done something that no one else has thought about before and might be a real hit with other gamers who enjoy the same games as you. So I, I think this would be a neat thing to talk about. Also, maybe you're the kind of person you just think all that stuff is nonsense. I want to hear about that too. Are you one of those people who like, listen, I want to play with the original components and bring in other things just feels cheap, kind of corny. I want to hear your thoughts on it too. Now, before I let you go, I do want to remind you we have a fundraiser going right now for the series. If you've enjoyed the show and you'd like to support it in that way, then you can head over to the link I'll have in the description of this video. You can find a Percolite, donate to the show, it helps support us. We certainly appreciate it. But until the next episode, Thanks for watching.